Okay, so I'm just going to hold the video on this frame for a moment. So um, what I've done is I've opened up the PP animation, the bl animation blueprint for my elf character. Um, and so what I've done is I've added four boolean variables. So you just add them with this little plus here. Uh, and I've added two integers, which are speed and direction. So integers are, I'm sorry, these are floats. So speed and direction are floats, uh, which are frequently used in uh, axes. And the benefit of a float is that um, if you've got uh, an axis that moves between 0 and 1, a integer will uh, add point values. So you can move from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. Um, whereas integers are whole numbers. So um, that is why we use floats instead of integers. So let's get this running and we can enter the heady and terrifying world of... Um, of step machines and blend spaces it's not a step machine it's a blend space okay so let me play this uh, so what uh, we're in the event graph here for the uh, elf animation so what I'm doing here is I am um, the, getting the pawn owner uh, is trying to find whatever is the owner obviously um, and then casting to the BP elf character is um, making sure that we have actually got our player character which I've named elf character to confuse myself so if we um, we want to now start looking at uh, getting the so what we're doing is we're getting the pawn owner we're get, finding the rotation we're finding the velocity uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the direction from those two so we know which way the character is facing uh, so that's the velocity and that's the rotation so I, so attach the rotation to the rotation and the velocity to the velocity so this appears to be a slight update in 4.24 as in there's no firing pin on the calculate direction uh, so let's go to vector length which uh, I uh, presume is giving you the actual size of the velocity the actual value of velocity and then what we're going to do is get the direction, sorry, set the speed and direction variables so that then we're telling the character. So we will then apply those new values to the variables. Confused? You will be. Uh, no, uh, so this is your kind of your basic setup for uh, movement, but obviously being relatively new to blueprints, um, some of this is confusing to me as well, although better than the nauseating syntax that I uh, that you would normally face if you are using a programming language so um, let's have a look what we're doing here so we're checking if the jump is pressed because we don't want to be moving forward if the uh, if you are in the air um, so let's have a look We're setting the jumping, uh, so this is a boolean. Uh, we're setting the crouching, we're setting the jogging. Okay, so I'm just basically setting these states from uh, from my character. So we are basically jump is pressed okay, crash pressed okay so what's happening here is that if any of these buttons are pressed jump press crouch pressed and we've named these within the uh, input settings so uh, we've we've named jog crouch jump um, so it's going to look at those in the input settings that we set up earlier um, and then if this is correct we are going to turn on these variables that we've set up called is jumping is crouching is jogging so these uh, it's telling them that all of these are correct so if you press those buttons it's gonna it's gonna tell the system that um, we are now in a jogging a prone a crouching a jumping state so we need to make sure the firing pins uh, are set up between all of them so they all fire okay 
So hopefully that's the end of setting up for the um, the event graph for the animation. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some of the information from the actual uh, official Unreal documentation. Get in the direction of the player character and speed, uh, and will be used inside the animation blueprint. You are also getting variables from my character. Yeah, we've talked about this previously. But if you can't be bothered looking at the documentation, which I've given you a link to, then freeze frame that screenshot, and then there you go. So just to point out, I was casting. You need to make sure you are casting to the BP elf character, not the BP animation graph, because that's what we're actually uh, we're actually on the elf animation blueprint at the moment. So not cast to itself. You need to make sure it's cast to the character. It was that was something that I found quite difficult to locate um, until I turned off context sensitive, I believe. Okay, so. I've just gone to the. Uh, I've just turned on the anim graph, which I think you can go up to window and turn on anim graph if it's not showing. It wasn't on mine, and add a new state machine. So this is very similar to the Unity version. Um, I imagine Unity probably copied it from Unreal. So it's got a. This this is all the different states that the character can be in, and you set these up, uh, and then you have the output pose. So we're going to call this. Player movement elf. Okay. So connect that up to the result. So and then we need to start populating the actual state machine. So it's telling me there's a warning because nothing we haven't put anything in the actual uh, blend tree yet. So uh, you always need an entry point to a blend tree, as I'm sure you know. Uh, it's telling us, giving us error messages at the bottom. So I've got, I've set up my blend states with the orange uh, uh, elements at the bottom of that list there on the right, and then the other ones are just simply the animations. So we can link to blend states and we can link to animations. So obviously, when we enter, we can link. We can go directly to the. Um, the idle, I knew that calling it link would confuse me at some point, so there you go. So we can actually attach that the finding pin directly to the link idle. If you look on the left there, we've now got the character, um, it's automatically idling. So next up, we want the blend space for walk. So we just double clicked on the blend space for walk, and what we need to do here is we need to set up the get the direction and get the speed of the character. Uh, and then what we do is we just connect them up to the blend space. So those variables are always uh, feeding into the blend space. Okay. So, so it's firing properly now, uh, but we have many more things to add into that state machine. So let's get started. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to go from, well I'm presuming that we are going to start by, we just want to make a transition link from idle to walk. And that's what that little, is giving us a little dot that we can double click on to specify the uh, the um, values for the transition. Values isn't the correct word. I'll try and remember it. Uh, the constraints of the transition. Okay, so first of all, we want to okay, let's have a look. Okay, so back into this event graph again. If I could spell or type. So get player character. Uh, so that should directly get us the player character that's been assigned previously, which is the elf. Okay. 
Okay. I want launch character, get character movement. Okay. So it's returning the character movement values uh, from the player character. Uh, and then what we want to do is check if it's falling, returns true if currently falling. Okay. So uh, obviously the character, this is kind of is grounded, so just to check if the character is on the ground or is in the air, or in this case is falling. So if it is falling, uh, then we want uh, it does not equal true. So that's the exclamation mark and equals is uh, does not equal. And so for not falling and So this is walking, moving from the idle to the walk. This is a transition set, if we remember. And if we're greater than or equal to, oh, just deleted that. If the speed is, keep going, Andy, greater than or equal to greater than. Okay. So if it's greater than zero, uh, it's greater than 169,000, that's not correct, 160, uh, then we can enter the transition. So if the, if the speed of the character is uh, from the idle animation moves to 160, uh, then we can run the uh, walk animation this is the idle to walk transition okay so let's have a look that should all be okay but it isn't okay so let's have a look all right okay so I've had this issue before um, so this is the multi threading which uh, is down at the bottom here okay so it's really uh, for uh, it's really for performance, but obviously as this is a tutorial, we're not too concerned about performance. So we can try to find the uh, where it lives. It's not on there. I think I'm going to have to go back up a level. So if you look at the top of this central window, you can see it's pretty much like. So sorry, it's in the class settings. Just turn off multi-threaded, and then if we compile again, it goes away. So really, that is something you want to bear in mind that um, that's to do with optimization, which, um, from the perspective of what we're doing here, it's not something you need to be concerned about. But you should bear it in mind uh, for when you are making millions of pounds on AAA games. These are the sort of things you will learn in a company. Uh, you'll be taught optimization. It's one of the core elements of uh, game development in large companies is that they don't want you slowing down their beautiful code with your silly design errors. Okay, so let's have a look uh, what we're in there where, uh, where blend space walk to link. So it's, back, it's going back from the walk to the link. So if float is less than 160, I presume. <coughs> Which means that if we're slowing down, then you can enter the transition from walk back to link. Sorry, back to idle. 